Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I'm your host, Hani Rambod, and I am here with my co-host, Austin, and I have a very special guest. The Romanian <laughs> Romeo is in the house. Andre Du. Welcome back. Well, welcome me, back. welcome back, and welcome back to you, too. We're both back welcome to back. <laughs> We're welcome back. Back to the USA back. for you. Back to the USA for me, because I just got back from Mexico. Um, and can, California, the both, <laughs> yeah. and California. I was uh, out in California for a while, uh, checking on my wife's store and checking on uh, prior, uh, you know, things that we were doing with the Evagen move. And uh, from there, we got to go on our anniversary uh, trip, which was awesome because it was my first time in Cancun, been to Cozumel, and I know you've been there because you sent me pictures. <laughs> I, I told Andre before. Hey, bro, can you give me some updates? He's like, yeah, bro, I'm about to board the plane. I'm thinking like, you know, he's going from Dubai to the UK or UK to Romania or vice versa. I get pictures from where? <laughs> tell me. Tell me, Andre. It was in Tulum in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> they're beach checking photos. Yeah, they're yeah. beach checking photos. Yeah. And he looks like Bam Bam with the weights. The yeah, wooden ones weights. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. the wooden yeah, ones. Yeah. The yeah. wooden <laughs> Tulum, man. Tulum. <laughs> so, you know, when you did that, how many times have you been back there? So I've been my first time in Cancun where you actually went. That was maybe like five years ago, I guess. Uh -huh. And then uh, the Tulum one that I keep sending a picture, it was actually this this year at the beginning of the year. At oh, the so beginning just, of the year. So it's fairly recent. Yeah, so I yeah. actually spent pre, uh, New Year's in Tulum and oh. then went into New Year's this year still in Tulum. So, so he was there for New Year's Eve? Yeah, yeah New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, New Year's Eve for like uh, two weeks. Very nice. Which one do you like better, Cancun? Or I, I, you know what? Here's the other thing. We joke about this, and for all of you listeners out there, <sighs> yacht life is a thing, right? And I call I call this yacht life because we see Andre doing <laughs> check ins. <laughs> And I, I get tagged on stuff. Not stuff that he's, I'm supposed to see. <laughs> this is stuff that other people have forwarded me when he's out training in the off-season. Again, off-season, off-season, especially with men's physique, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more lax than doing open bodybuilding, right? If it was Phil or Jay or whatnot. And even though they have had their times where they've had fun and we've been out all around the world and we've done stuff too. But Andre gets to be the pinnacle of boat life, <laughs> yacht life. He's on yachts in Dubai, and I'm like, I don't hear from him for three or four days. No check-in, nothing. And I'm nothing. There's no check-ins, right? And he's supposed to be checking in every three days. Okay, five days goes by. I'm starting to send up messages to people that I know, and, and then I get messages back, and they're like, you don't know? And I'm like, what do you mean I don't know? They're like, he's been in the ocean for like three days straight, like out there, and he hasn't slept. He hasn't eaten. Bro, he's drank a lot. I did drink, not a lot, but I did drink, <laughs> but I was missing meals and I was missing sleep. Because uh -huh. imagine, like, I will go out around, I don't know, like, 8, 9 p.m. and I'll get back home, like, 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. Right. So, like, you know, the day sleep is not as good as the night one. So, like, I, I wouldn't recover properly. I wouldn't eat properly. Plus, I'll call on top of it, so it'll be, like, the... The worst remix. <laughs> so, am I taking notes right now on how to get this physique? Is <sighs> no, you know what? This yacht, isn't about the physique. Wait, this was about. This is really what it was about. Was about trying to create balance mm -hmm. because we're in such an imbalanced world, and I think that sometimes people go down that rabbit hole a little too deep, and they can't get themselves out of it. And that's what I was always afraid of with him. But actually, he was always able to come back at least till now, so I don't want to, you know, knock on wood and don't, <laughs> don't want to go down that road um, because I think the stress, and, and again, we've talked a lot about mental health and, you know, in the show today, I really want to just talk a little bit about an update with Andre. This is the longest since Andre and I started working together and he's been an eVision athlete as well as one of my athletes that we've gone without seeing each other. Normally, it's no longer than four or five months. If, if so, yeah. If that, right? And this time it's nine. Yeah. It's been like almost nine months because the Olympia got pushed back another three months and he's been traveling all around the world. I haven't been traveling because of COVID and the move from California to Texas. And normally we would, you know, again, I normally would have been in India. I would have saw you there or I would have been in Dubai or if we were doing something in FIBO. But because of the fact that I didn't go to those things or they were basically postponed, and he was out running around doing some of those events. India. How was India, bro? It was really good, bro. Really good. Like, uh, 
you know, in Indian following is like so different from the other following, yeah. you know? So like a bodybuilder that goes there is like, like something. It's like so a big deal. Is, they treat like, you like a Hollywood star. I was literally, mind literally. blown from seeing videos of it. That stuff. was flowers being thrown. Bro. Giant crowds. I never ever gave that many flowers to anybody <laughs> in my whole life. How many flowers I got from these people in India, you know? Right. Yeah. But like they, they're very welcoming and they're very like... Um, they come over, they touch your feet. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like a sign yeah, of respect, respect, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Respect. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And like they yeah. want to hug you and stuff. But like overall, it was such a such a great experience. Like I love India. Every time I go there, I have such a such a good fun. And it actually makes me. Uh, it makes you feel good. Makes me feel good, but makes me feel grateful and uh, to have this opportunity to be able to travel and meet all these kind of people, you know. Yeah. And some of these people they actually look up to me and. You know, like how I did look up to other people. So it means a lot to me because uh -huh. I know where they're coming from. Right. I was in that place too. So it was, it was really good. It was really good. And um, like the expo, like we was there for like three, four hours each day. But like the queue, the queue was like yeah. the longest queue that we had there. And I'm not even saying that because... I was there or anything like right. that. Right, and for you non-speakers, Q basically means the line. The line. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the Euro line. UK yeah. version of line. But sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm playing translator here. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Hadi? Oh. <laughs> Hadi is coming out tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, the good thing is that you really truly appreciate it, and I'm the same way. Everyone's like, oh, you want to go to India? You really like India? And I go, I love it. I love India. And the reason why I love India so much is because the people there are so grateful. Mm. They're so grateful. They really, we have a lot of followers on social media yeah, that are yeah. Indian, but we also know how much that they really appreciate our sport and what we do. So again, I love going there and I can't wait to go back because at the end of the day, those people really make it worth it mm -hmm. for us to go and spend 22 hours on a flight to get out there. Cause I got to go, you, you know, San Francisco, I was going to Dubai, Dubai layover, then another several hours to either, either Delhi or to Mumbai, depending on whatever yeah. the events in. And uh, for you, it was a little bit easier because now you're based in Dubai. I was, yeah, I was in Dubai. So it was only like literally like three hours and a half. It was like a, a short flight, you know. But if I was going to go from UK where I'm also based, it would be like seven, eight hours, which we did in the, at the beginning anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think it's actually worth going there. It is. It's worth going there, you know. And the thing is like no, nowadays, like the fitness industry is growing so much in India, mm -hmm. you know. And... They start doing like expos, but also like uh, NPC and IBB pro shows, which they never had these kind of things, you know. Right. Even in some of the European countries, they don't even have these kind of shows than they have in India, you know. So it's, it's growing. Fitness is growing there. Yeah. And the line was one of the biggest lines. I know you had yeah. one of the biggest lines there. I've seen videos of it come through on yeah. Instagram stories and stuff. They, they literally were br fighting and breaking the, um, you know, the, the line, uh -huh. the barrier in wow. the, yeah, the line. To actually get a picture, <laughs> to actually get a picture, you know, which was crazy. And every time I would go to the bathroom or to have my meal or anything like that, I would have to get like this, like eight securities to, to get out because you, you couldn't get out. You know, yeah. everybody just, they just want to come and hug you, take a picture of you, talk to you, hand, uh, shake your hand and so on. So, yeah. Next so, year, they're waiting for you. I, I'm, I can't <laughs> wait to go out there because, like I said, I wanted to go earlier this year when you guys went. But because of the move and because of the mm -hmm. building, which we're definitely going to do an update. I can't wait to, to have I'm you excited. come by there this week I'm excited. so we can take it, take it over there. Right now, we're in the middle of construction. All the demos getting done. Everything's getting torn out. So there's so much still construction left. But it's, it's going to the right way. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Being able to do this and you being able to be here because you've been with me now for going on like almost the fourth year now, right? Fourth year. It's going to yeah. be our fourth year, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you've been able to just kind of see the progress and the progression of the, of the company and then us moving and everything else. The overall, you know, the company and us even, you know, everything is, is going to the right di direction. And it really is. And now we're able to do so <coughs> much more here. Um, do you see a difference now that, you know, we trained like Saturday we trained. We trained again to this morning. Uh, the demographic, the people, is a bit different, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like more like, I don't know, it's just like a different kind of vibe here. It's a bit younger. Y younger. Like, like I even see, like I was telling JJ, my other videographer, that he, like here, I haven't seen anybody in the world that 
train topless like this kids here they train <laughs> well, I, this, again, this is not <laughs> topless women it's topless <laughs> no, it's <only> guys okay. <laughs> guys specify. taking the shirts off specify. My, we have to sorry. specify <laughs> the gym's gonna get raided tomorrow yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be like <laughs> they're training at a topless hey. gym <laughs> we're training at a topless gym everyone's <laughs> gonna be like please send location <laughs> send location <laughs> 108 degrees outside I that's right i don't blame people yeah it, and but but it's one of those things that yeah some people are like in super good shape and some people are not so good in shape, they're but, there. but they're getting there. Yeah. And I think that one thing that they all have in common, especially with Absolute Recomp where we're training, it's they're serious. And that's the thing. They're not sitting there just, you know. Playing around, taking pictures. Exactly. They actually train. They're actually also, training. Yeah. Now, they're all at different so I levels. I can't really say anything, you know. Like No, no. I don't think it's a negative thing. Them. I think it's yeah. just a motivation thing. And I think that you see a lot of teenagers, 18, 17, 19, I agree. 21-year-olds. Doing that. And then you see young girls. Like, I've seen more girls that are 16, 17 mm -hmm. years old that now are coming up and talking to me about competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a couple of girls in there that are like 16, 17 years old oh, wow. and they want to compete in bikini. And there also is just a different vibe in there of respect amongst the younger folks in there. That That's not, I've, you know, sometimes when you go to commercial gyms that are heavily mm -hmm. young, uh, there can be more of a competitive kind of uh, energy in mm -hmm. the air. And I've mm -hmm. noticed that there's more likely to, you're more likely to see people in that gym uh, mm -hmm. go up and talk to each other, to each maybe other, like yeah. ask questions or offer advice or whatever it might be. Exactly, you know? exactly. And that's cool. Yeah, and I think that, so let's talk about the other gym that you're normally training at over at Binos, right? Binos, oh yeah. Yeah, Dubai, yeah. yeah and Binos is a good guy. Um, he call, He's considered the most expensive trainer in the world. He's oh, what he wow. wrote. But I said that's because I don't publish my rates. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, it's a little competition with me and Vinos. Uh, shots fired. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, but yeah, he does have that up there, and it's a world class gym. Uh, whenever I come there, I definitely go to visit him personally, but also because he has a great gym in there. Um, I see a lot of videos of us training there yeah. and myself training with they other They even athletes. had our pictures on the wall, your pic your picture uh -huh. with Hadi. Oh, okay. Uh, my picture too, so uh -huh. the few of us were there, but I think they... Their pictures are up, up the, on the screen. On on the screen, but also on the wall. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, now yeah. because they've been, they've been there for like months, but I think now because they're working, they're trying to change or add another floor. They had to take uh, take off the the pictures and stuff. I okay. Said, I said to him, "I'm gonna change him. I'm not gonna train here no more." Oh, yeah, <laughs> so man. the pictures are back up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Vinos, you better put your pictures back up, or you're we're gonna call. We're gonna be. You're gonna be the second best gym in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think that uh, you know that that place has definitely become the mecca of of the uh, training of, of the Middle East. In, in, the, in the Gulf region, I agree. especially because so many people come and go from there. I mean, there's a lot of other good gyms around the area, but because so many people travel to Dubai, because I think it's the most free in terms of, you know, the, the restrictions, exactly. alcohol, you know, it's kind of like they consider it like the Las Vegas of the Middle East mm -hmm. for foreigners that want to come in and out. Yeah. But that being said, too, you said something <laughs> no, earlier before no. we started. No, you mentioned it to me. Oh, no, no, no. You, you he, has it, question question. he has a question for you. He has a question for you. Go ahead. Uh, apparently, I've heard that there is a large percentage of prostitutes. Uh, when it comes to women out there in Dubai, I agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I was just wondering about. Yeah. You're you're right. Like I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you got so next to the mic, man. And for the record, yeah. I'm not going enough. out there. Yeah. So this is for the not record. A if anybody wants to sponsor him to uh, <laughs> this take is a not flight, an inquiry. This is... <laughs> okay. This is just. Are you looking for uh, air, you know some kind of airline sponsorship? <laughs> like no, it's just like if I'm in a trivia game and I get asked the question, I can now answer it. It's not. I'm not heading out there. So anyway, no, he's, he's very true. Like I remember <laughs> when we went uh, to the Dubai Master Show the uh, the first year, mm -hmm. me you and Hadi. I went to a club, but it was my first time in Dubai too. So of course I don't know anything like what's going on, how people right. are girls and so on. So I'm going to the club. I'm going with my friend. We just like playing around, you know, and trying to chat with these girls, you know, just like <laughs> for fun. And we talk, we talk, we talk. And then after like 20 minutes of talking, this girl comes to my ear and she says, oh, three, three thousand. I'm like, in my mind, like, what do you mean 3,000? And then I realized, oh, you mean 3,000 dirhams, which is like the, yeah. the currency that they have. Yeah. So like they literally just tell you straight away, you know, how much their charges are. That's crazy. Like in a public place. Within first few minutes, you mentioned. Yeah, literally. Like At we the just club. said, oh, like, how, how are you? Like, what's your name? Or, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, just small talk. Of, exactly. Yeah. And then after that, 3,000. 
That's it. 3,000. You yeah. probably were up until that point being like, my jokes are hitting hard tonight. Like, everybody's laughing at my jokes. Uh, they're really right. interested. And then all of a sudden, they, <laughs> 3, they pull out a credit card reader. And then you're just. <laughs> Did you open up your Instagram and say, I've got almost five old. At the I time, said, you probably have You need million. to pay me. I charge 5,000. <laughs> That's right. I charge 5,000. Okay. <laughs> you charge 3,000. So you owe me 2,000. <laughs> That's how this works. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he was saying. This is why he's turning red right now. This is exactly what too, too hot here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure, it's Dallas. Sure, it's Dallas. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah, it's crazy. I guess because like, there's so many. There is so many rich people there. Uh -huh. You know, that like in Middle East. So I guess like it's just easier for them too. That's crazy because you know like, what? I, this is like the fourth or fifth time I've been told that people that were out there that live there or they travel there, they go, "Hey, you know, most of those influencers that are women are their working girls," and I just said. No, are you serious? And they're like, no. And then again, hearing it over and over and over again. And so this has actually happened to you. No, so it is very true. Like, and the thing is getting worse by the year because Dubai is becoming such a hot uh, spot. Such a hot spot, exactly. Yeah. Since COVID happened, because it was kind of free to travel there, no restrictions and so on, it became very popular. So, like, everybody's going there, and then all the influencers are going there, and then all these other girls are going there, so everybody's just there, you know? Wow, so they're influencing in other ways. Influ yeah, that's <laughs> another, yeah, exactly. It's way. a different kind of discount code. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you say swipe up? <laughs> you, say, <laughs> you know, they're having their conventions there. I'm Everything. just like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's oh, crazy. Man. That is crazy. Well, you know what? That's, that, you know, now it's starting to make sense because everybody's been saying that for a while. But now it's confirmed. There you no, go. Yes, yes. That's, That's it. I didn't know either. So there you go. You got the answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, speak, speaking of that whole thing, like another thing that people keep asking me is with you having so many followers, they say, how does someone your age, you know, obviously a good looking guy, right? Okay. But I'm um, not as good looking as me, but it's okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> waiting for that. I was life. waiting for that. I saw you know, boss and I'm like, that's ah, coming. Good looking yeah. I was waiting for that. <laughs> exactly. But, but good looking guy that does modeling kind of before you even started doing bodybuilding, right? Weren't you doing some yeah. modeling? Yeah. Well, modeling. And then you're doing modeling. Now you're doing body, bodybuilding, modeling. You're also um, part of a very elite status of competitors in the physique you know, world. All of these things, you have almost 6 million followers. What's that like? Because I literally have people asking me that, that are women, that said, how does he handle the attention? Oh, it's talking about attention yes. here. Oh, okay. We're talking about attention. <laughs> well, honey, like, okay, I'll okay. tell you, it's pretty difficult for me to handle. I'm not going to lie. I struggle with it very, very consistently. Austin, I think, I think your volume is just a little lower on the DMs versus Andre. So, you know, like with Andre, you know, Nick Walker is a very big open book regarding He, he shared right? a lot. Because no, you, know? yeah. you have one extreme. You have Derek, yeah. who's been practically married for a very, very long time. Yeah. And then, you, you know, who's been locked down in a relationship for a long time and an amazing woman that he's married to. Then you have Nick, who is, you know, Mr. Gigolo, right? Like Nick, <laughs> City boy. Like, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> City yeah. boy, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. Right. So you got, you, got, you got the other side that was, you know, Nick Walker. <laughs> you have some people in between. And then there's you, okay? I know you're undercover, brother. When it comes <laughs> to things, right? I know you're undercover. And you've had your relationships and, and whatnot. But my whole thing is that, when people were asking me to ask you, they said, what is it like to be at that position where, like, is it, does it happen like daily on your DMs? Is it like so many people sliding into your DMs? We need stats. What's going on? Yeah. yeah we're, we're, yeah. Let, let, let the audience know, you know the what thing. it's like to be Andre. <laughs> you know, the thing is with this whole Instagram social media thing and following it's like a lot of people, they think that, oh my God, this guy's got six, seven, and so on million followers. And he gets like 100 DMs a day from women. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Probably from from the 100 DMs, probably like... 80 of them are guys. 
literally. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even, yeah. how, how much can you bench, bro? What's your uh, training like? You know? Yeah, your packs are very juicy. <laughs> <laughs> you look really dry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like most, super dry, bro. Uh, super dry. You know, most of these DMs uh, are about like training and so on. But of course, you also get like the other attention from the girls and stuff. Right. But the thing is, the way they try to get your attention, I'm not saying everybody, right. every girl, I'm saying half of these girls, the way they are trying to get your attention is by doing something that you wouldn't take them serious, if that makes sense. So they, they will send you like all kinds of pictures or videos and stuff and, and like you would watch it or like whatever, but like you, you wouldn't. Well, yeah, but what are you, are you talking about like, what kind of videos and pictures? Like, <laughs> yeah, like videos that shouldn't be sent to me. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh you're, should talking be about, you're talking yeah, about like yeah, yeah, nudes. Yeah, like, yeah, good videos. Monetizationable <laughs> level of this YouTube video. Yeah. No training videos. <laughs> no, okay. I was like, oh, check out my form. Yeah. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> Imagine. But you're saying that at that point, it would cross into a different area where you at that point wouldn't exactly. take and it I super seriously. Exactly. I yeah. wouldn't take that person seriously yeah. if she would approach me this way. Okay, so know? women out there that are looking or uh, interested, do not send nudes at least the first time. Yeah, yeah, you can send the second, first time. <laughs> the first DM should be, hi, how are you? Looking great, blah, 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 and so on. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was going to say, so so normally, so you don't even look at those first ones as serious. You're just like, you yeah. know what? This is Sometimes it. I would click on the page. Yeah, I was going to say, of course he looks at them. <laughs> of course, Come on. Every now and You're then. saying, you don't look at them seriously. No, he looks at them. Of course I do does look. Not. You know, like, oh, God, I look and then I just see like the page to see like what kind of person is this person, you know? But like, that, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And then you, and then, but then, but then again, like because I've been I've been on relationship. I'm the type of guy that like doesn't really like the single life and go play around and stuff because I do like this kind of life. But like I feel like overall for me it doesn't it will keep me off the track. So like mm -hmm. I will lose my training. I will lose distractions. Uh, distra yeah, like big big distractions. Yeah. Distractions for me because you like you you have to meet them up, miss meals, have a drink, and you know all this shit. You know. So like I like being in a relationship where I have like comfort and I know that I have somebody to go back to, you know, then and focus on my own shit rather than just chase, 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 chase. You know? So like in this I've been having my first relationship fifteen year, at fifteen years old. I'm twenty six now. So like in this eleven years I've been single for like maybe a month. <laughs> so oh, I did like relationship, relationship hub. and relationship yeah. and like I yeah. waste no time, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So, so, so on the complete flip side of that, what have been maybe a few DMs that have caught your eye past, like to actually in create some interest? Like have there been some that have like generated some interest that you'd want to talk to that person more on the complete opposite side of like you're not gonna take that seriously? Yeah, like some of these some of these DMs they would they would approach me, know like that they are interested in me, that they or they look for attention. Yeah, they will just tell me their kind of story or anything like that. You know, like how they survive. Like actually, like, lately I got so many DMs uh -huh. about they surviving depression or like mm -hmm. they stuff like that. You know, so like they've been like, oh, I've been looking up to you, inspiring me. Like this coming from girls, mm -hmm. not even guys. You mm -hmm. know, like from girls, which is, I think, I I think it's really cool to come these things to come from a girl so something that creates a little bit Just more of a connection exactly you know yeah so um, i think i think it's the open and honesty it yeah. sounds like yeah you're, you're that you create a connection that way yeah exactly and like i have i have friends that like actually created like through dms which nothing happened and you know so like it's just like the way they approach it's like the way they approach why are you laughing so much? Why are you smiling so much? You're like, not yet, because I'm in Australia. He's giving yet. away the playbook to, right now. You know, I mean, he's Everyone's sweating. He's sweating. I'm working book, ebook, ebook, coming e very, very yes. soon. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> right. yeah, swipe up for 10% off. But yeah, like, I, did, I don't really like uh, getting into these DMs and stuff because yeah. I'm in a relationship. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I think it's good to get in. You are now? I am in a relationship right now. Wow. Yes, I've been Ooh. in a relationship for the last... Dun, dun, dun. So please don't DM me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been in a relationship for like six, seven months now. Wow, okay. Awesome. Yeah. But I've been keeping it low-key because, you know, what people don't know, they can ruin. Oh, and yeah. And then on top of that, like, as you saw on my Instagram and social media, like, only reason and things I posted, like, fitness-related, mm -hmm. literally, or work-related. 
so I want to keep it that way, you know? Right. And yeah, like, just, what, what is your thought process on that? Because some people are very different. Some people are, like, all out there with their social. They'll put their relationships, their kids, everything out. And then, and then others are a little bit more reserved. I think it depends on what industry you're in or how do you feel about it? I think, I, I think it's also good, but I think it's also bad. Mm. Because, like, put it this way, like, you get into a relationship and then after two, three months, like, in these two, three months, you are so in love. You are like, oh, my God, I love this person, blah, blah, blah. And then after three months, something happens. And then... You know, you have yeah. to put everything on social media. It's you not know? just the good thing. You have to just, also put the exactly. breakup out there. And then, you know, yeah. like, there's always two sides of the story. So, yeah. like, maybe that person might make you look like an idiot or you're going to make that person look like a yeah idiot or yeah. whatever, you know. So, I don't know. In my case, I'd rather keep it private. Mm -hmm. Of course, share it here and there, like, when you feel like. But, like, keep the relationship private on social media, but, like, don't keep the don't keep the person private if that makes mm. sense like oh, don't, yeah. don't hide where really you're looking at it yeah don't hide whoever you are with yeah you know because i think that the way you have to start realizing things is that people love drama mm -hmm. and they if even if you don't have drama sometimes people will like to create drama because people are bored and they want to turn around and do it it's, and it's not necessarily like it could be ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends. It could be whatever. But at the same time, it's just people in general. Yeah. That's why TMZ does so well, <laughs> right? <laughs> people love to be able to follow the drama or people like to create drama so that it basically helps them out of the boredom of life mm -hmm. versus those because they live vicariously through a lot of people that they follow. So I have seen that a lot. But it's, it's you know, again, I knew that you were you know, seeing somebody and all that, but I didn't know it was that serious. And, um, and that's cool. So let me ask you this. Is it different because the person, is that person like in, in the field? Is it? You know? he's, he is in the fitness industry. Like she works as a PT uh -huh. and she's also she's a personal um, trainer. Yeah, exactly. And she's uh -huh. also a model, but like she knows a lot about fitness and she uh -huh. actually trains and diets like, like me, you know, like mm -hmm. <clears throat> really good. But actually makes it easier, yeah. So she's uh, she's also Romanian, so we speak the same language. Oh wow! Oh, awesome. So we get along, you know, mm -hmm. like the traditional stuff, mm -hmm. or like the jokes, even mm -hmm. like just like clicks. Do you has your family met her? Yeah. Just no. Oh wow! Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Right. We're getting the inside mom, scoop mom here. Mom has met her. <laughs> yeah. Mom has met her. Mom and dad. Literally just two days before I had to flew uh, flew in here. Wow. Before you flew to the yeah, US. Yeah, so she just came to London for like two days. Okay. And then she came back to Romania, and then I came here. Because well, your family was all in, in the UK at the time? Yeah, the UK. The okay. UK now. Okay, yeah, I know they go back and forth between Yeah, they're actually going to leave uh, after my show. They're going to wait for me to get back, okay. enjoy some food, and then uh, they, will, uh, they will drive to Romania. Nice. Nice. Wow. So <laughs> let me ask you this. What did your mom think? They, uh, they both like her. Really? Yeah, they both. Oh. Of course, it's easier for my family to get along with her because they speak the same language my mm -hmm. family they don't Culturally, you know you made them yeah they don't really speak that yes. much english so right it's, it's the same culture yeah, too, his so dad's he, a good dude clicks. his dad i met his dad in romania he always uh, asks yeah. ask about yeah. you yeah. He's, such, <laughs> yeah. he's so proud of, of, of his <laughs> too proud sometimes yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's really cool <laughs> yeah he's uh he's definitely he's just a, a really hard-working guy that it seems that he really appreciates everything that Andre's done because again, and I don't, I want to speak for him because I don't, he's not going to speak about it himself. He does a lot for his family. Mm -hmm. You know, he yeah, goes out of his a way a lot where he goes out of his way to be able to really send money home, take care of things, you know, their house, their, um, all the other family members. They actually retired that. my mom last yep. year. Nice. Yeah. Cause oh, she had awesome. like really bad back, a uh, mm -hmm. back problem, like really bad. She had to get a surgery mm -hmm. and she kind of, she's kind of scared about these things, you know, like very, very scared. So like, we also had, we have a dog. So like when you have a dog, it's like a kid. You have to take yeah. care so much of him. So I just said like, you know what, like, why don't you just stay home? Like take care of me, take care of my food and stuff. Take care of the, of the dog. And then I'll just, I'll just send you money. I'll just pay you like every month, you know, mm -hmm. so you can just do whatever you have to do. So She's on the payroll. Yeah, she's <laughs> on the payroll. payroll awesome. taking but they awesome. also did a lot, a lot for me, like coming up. Like I remember like. I started at 15 years old, so like mm -hmm. I didn't work, I had no money, right? As I, I was sitting in school. So uh, they would go to work, you know, even like just really basic work where they have to pay food, rent, travel for them. They also smoke. So 
they have to pay all these things and bills. And uh, I remember like there wasn't a month that they would engage me like 150 uh, pounds, which was like 200 dollars mm-hmm. here. Literally every month to get supplements like protein mm-hmm. powder or like creatine, pre things mm-hmm, like that mm-hmm. to make sure I have all, all the things I need to, to train because they saw how much I like training mm-hmm. and stuff. So like literally every, every month for the last three, four years, the first three, four years, mm-hmm. they, they helped me a lot with my uh, fitness journey. So like yeah. now I have to pay back. Yep. hundred percent. Would you say that that, it seems like you had a pretty, you know, solid support system. Would you say that is what has kind of made you into a relationship person in a way that like having a support system is very important to you or oh yeah 110 you know? like they've been very very supportive of me especially my mom i remember yeah. my dad when i started telling him like look like i want to get into the industry like i want to compete like he didn't know anything about fitness competitions athletes and so on so he was like oh you know like it's not going to be money. You have to also think about your future. When you have a family, you're not going to have whatever to put uh, your family on the table. Like this is not going to pay you, blah, blah, blah. And then I was, because I listened to my parents. Right. And at that time, I was like 17 years old. So like I was studying plumbing. That's yeah. right. Really? Yeah. Plumbing. So yeah, yeah that, no this way. is a really good story because he told the story before. But for those that haven't heard it yet, yeah. Andre was basically going to be a plumber. Yeah. Jacked plumber. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking break the plumber. <laughs> yeah. That's it. He would, no, seriously. He was going to wow. be a plumber because it was a tradesman. Yeah. And I think that... Go ahead and I'll let you tell the story. Yeah, so like I, uh, I finished school and then I went to college. And then in college, I literally just listened to my dad saying, oh, you know, plumber is a good... My mom actually wanted me to be a chef. So chef, imagine wow. me being overweight already at that time because I was overweight when I started training. Uh-huh. And my mom. Do you went, know about this or no? I've seen. Also, I went back and I saw photos. I don't know the full story, but I've I've seen all the photos and everything like that. Yeah, I was uh, overweight. That's that the, was one of the reasons that I started because I got bullied got in it. school. So anyway, I st- I uh, I finished that, and then my mom was, you know, you can be a chef. You know, people always wanted to eat. They need food to live and so on. And they're like, no, I don't want to become a chef. Like, and so on. And my dad was, no, you have to become a plumber. Like, this is a good pay. All this, all this shit. So I listened to him. I went to college, studied two years. I was going like two, three times a week, but I didn't, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing there. Like I had no clue, literally no clue. Because, you know, when you don't enjoy something, when yeah. you don't like something, you don't really care about that thing or mm-hmm. like get interested to know about it. So I finished it. And then I remember he took me to a construction site with him. I went first day, so bad. The second day, I left like lunchtime, 12 p.m. I left. I was like, fuck this, I'm going home. Like, I don't want, I don't want my life to be like this. Like, I don't enjoy this. I'm too young to be doing these things and not have, uh, like, don't, not enjoy doing these things, you know, yeah. like. So anyway, after that, like, I started working in the gym, cleaning, putting the weights back and so on. I was also having, like, few clients where I was training them. I was also training myself for competitions and so on. And then... Uh, here we wow. are. Wow. Yeah. But I mean, I've been, I've been working my ass all, all the time. Like all the time. I, was, I, I remember I was doing work at the, uh, at the gym where I was cleaning, cooking and so on. I was, going to call, uh, I was going to work as a waiter in the evenings at night. Like very far. Like it would take me like two hours to get there. I would work for like five, six hours, two hours to come back 3 a.m. in the morning. How are you so, getting back and forth? I had my friend that he he was driving, mm. or like the boss that uh, had the company. Uh-huh. She would drive us back because she would live like nearby. Wow. But I literally like every Friday. This is like, all in Romania. No, in UK. In the UK. In UK, yeah. How but, old were you when you tra- when you moved from Romania to the UK? Fifteen years old. Fifteen years old. Yeah, yeah fifteen. And years that must old. have been tough too because of the language problem, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But it's been tough because I think you only learned English like this year. <laughs> 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 Ooh, savage. Ooh, the fire. only yeah. reason why I say that is because yeah. I feel always... damage. <laughs> Emotional damage. Emotional damage. Yeah. The reason why I say this is because he's talking now like he's been, you know, speaking English since yeah. he was day one, right? But the thing is, I always tell him, you need to speak more on your social media. Yeah. You, you're so good when we are in Dubai, when we're here, there. You're so good at talking, but you do and good, so good at speaking. But he doesn't like to do it. And I always drive him nuts. You know, right? I always go, hey, bro, speak more about this, about this, about this. Okay, bro. Okay, okay. 
hey, I really like this flavor. Of <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Then it just answer. It's, just, it's no. just always like that. And now he's no, it's actually so getting, much. It, it does get better now. It, it, you're more it comfortable, better, right? You're definitely much more I think now because now I don't really think about what I'm saying. Even if I say this word wrong, I don't think about it. I just mm-hmm. let it go. Right. You know, like at the end of the day, English is not my first language, so it is what it is. You know? Right. What language do you know? I mean, you know Farsi. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. I need to ask you what language do you know? <laughs> I know like a few words in Farsi now yeah, because yeah, of yeah, yeah. stuff. He says. Yeah. He learned a little bit of Farsi. And then yeah. I barely know English. So yeah. we're still working on that. <laughs> and then I'll move into another language after I master that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's the story. So wow. when you started to do the plumbing, the backstory about you being heavy, right? Being overweight. overweight. Mm -hmm. How much did you weigh? I don't really know the measurements at that time, but I know I was short. I didn't, I wasn't this high. I was short and I was just overweight. And I remember so clear, like it was Christmas and this is such a Romanian thing. Like for Christmas or or, uh, Easter or New Year, like your family goes, to the shop with you to get you new new clothes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyway, we went to the shop. I got some clothes, some t-shirts and stuff. And then when I was just, when I was about to try the jeans, I remember that you know, like where you have like the, the legs, like in between the legs, they were, you know, where like the legs in between the legs, mm-hmm. they uh-huh. were doing this because I was just so overweight. Oh, you're they were rubbing. They were rubbing it yeah. because I was just over overweight. And here, like my my uh, how do you call this? Your wrist. wrist? My wrist. Yeah, they were like so so big and puffy. And in, in school, like, I was getting bullied literally mm-hmm. every day, every day, calling me fat, 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 or gypsy fat. <laughs> gypsy oh, fat? Yeah, because, you know, like, yeah. I'm gypsy, so, like, they would be like, you are gypsy, but you are also fat. <laughs> Is that, like, a thing? Is there, are most gypsies fat? They're not gypsy fat, are they? Bro, actually, they are, you know, because they say that they... They like to eat a lot. <laughs> oh, really? Which yeah, I guess I didn't know that stereotype. I didn't no, he is, he is, he is, he is. Like, most of the year, he is. So yeah, so this is how I. Uh, how so, but you're like shrep- shredded g- gypsy dot com now. And now, yeah, I'm shredded. No more fat, <laughs> but I'm still gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. And then on on the gypsy side too, which is interesting, is that I think do you also have your own language? Yeah, we have our own language, which I don't speak. I don't understand it. My dad doesn't speak it or understand it. Only my mom, she speaks it or understands it. So is it a is it a dialect of Romanian or is it is gypsy spoken all through all Europe and it's the same language for everybody in Europe or is it only a, a dialect of the Romanian gypsy? of the Romanian gypsy but you also have like few words that they the other gypsy they can understand wow you okay. know yeah I'm, I'm I don't really know too much about this thing because even nowadays like my my mom she doesn't really speak with her family gypsy or or anything like that they just speak Romanian you know this is such a, like... So when you meet other gypsies, do you know, like, Irish gypsies, English gypsies? Do you, do you realize that they're gypsies? I can, I can tell by the way they look uh-huh. that they're gypsy. But even if they talk to me, like, I won't understand. But how do you tell what they look? Is it something they wear? Is it yeah, like, it's just like, it's like, like the way they... Yeah, I'm really exactly. curious. The hairstyle is like... The, the only whole gypsies thing. I know is from like Snatch, right? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. Snatch? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. No, it's <laughs> like the way they dress and the way they, they style. I don't know. It's just like you can you can tell straight away. Did you ever see the movie Snatch? No. Oh, you got to see that movie. No, it's no, a classic. Like, yeah, I think those yeah. were Irish gypsies, right? Were they yeah, Irish or so. English? I thought it was Irish. I think they were Irish gypsies. And... uh Brad Pitt uh-huh. plays an Irish gypsy. Oh, it's a big movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a very, oh, yeah, it's a very big, big movie. movie. It's a very big movie. It's a classic. It's a classic movie. It's yeah. a very oh, okay. good movie. Yeah. And they, uh, there were some gangsters, and then there were some gypsies, and then they had, uh, the, they would call them, what, caravans? The, Caravan. <laughs> yeah, you know the caravans? Yeah, 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 Which are yeah, like yeah. RVs yeah. is what I think they would call uh, all of that. But it's one of those things that I didn't realize that when you guys spoke that there's certain words that are actually in gypsy that everybody understands. It's similar, yeah. Similar. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Fat, that, fat gypsy that's pretty rough well and i also think yeah. it's kind of like they also a lot of the gypsies are also they try to marry other very gypsies. early yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like early. 15 16 oh. really yeah 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 like no nowadays like they try to do it a little bit later like 18 19 20 mm-hmm. but usually like the very very early like and our our family setting up like were you ever said hey look we want you to marry another gypsy Pff, no way no way <laughs> really? like we are not this kind of gypsy that they have to set up the family is like 
you know. But like, there are gypsies that do. Oh that. yeah, hundred and ten percent. Yeah, okay. yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A, a I range. know. I know. Yeah, I Got think it. it's it's a, from what I understand. I, I, I've seen some shows also that passing by where the gypsy families are trying to hook them up with other gypsies. And again, I can be wrong. If you guys know anything about I'm sure this, people will please correct us. go correct us in the comments. You section. talk about anything on YouTube, all of a sudden, yes. all of the gypsy experts yeah. are going to come yeah. out yeah. in the comments. My, my, my big fat gypsy wedding. You know, you had your big fat Greek, Greek wedding. wedding. Yeah. Now he's going to be a big fat gypsy wedding. It's going to be my wedding. Bro. Now, yeah. is, your, is, is your girl you're seeing now, is oh. she gypsy? Nah, she's not. Oh, she's oh. not. Okay, All my right. big fat Romanian wedding. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> so that could be it. That could the be one, never bro. Know. You never know. Is, is, never are know. you saying it's the one? Maybe. No, no, no. It's too early to say this. Still too early. Okay. No, okay. No, I just no, didn't I'm know. Just, if we I'm just on the hot seat here. Hey, bro. Here. You know, just, I'm just guys, saying here bro, on the truth podcast. <laughs> yeah. I want to know if you if it, if hey look if there's always. There's always room for interpretation here, and <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be able to make. You never sure know. You, you never know exactly. Yeah, that's right. No, we just we just vibing at the moment. Just whatever vibing. happens happens. That's, that's right. Very, that's a very well, I think, I think the culture thing. thing yeah, you know, obviously vibing. my wife is Persian, uh -huh. and it does create a little bit of that connection. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's impossible to get connection with somebody with a different culture, but I think that it does create a special thing. Whether it's language, whether it's culture in general tradition yeah yeah tradition it's a very good word and even small things like jokes you know like yeah. it's mm -hmm. much easier to like understand it and like you know yeah. rather than me translating a romanian joke in english it doesn't even make sense <laughs> yeah, so even... like, what the fuck you saying bro <laughs> <laughs> you know right it's kind of like us with our kubita burps you know and you're just like oh my god it's the most disgusting thing ever but then they're like ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you know but after you eat kubita you know from the onions yeah, yeah, so you yeah. get the onion breath and uh but yeah I, I i definitely see that but with that being said taking you back to being bullying I think that's a, such a big defining moment mm -hmm. when people are growing up, how they deal with that. Right now, especially with the pandemic, with people being cut off from a lot of people. And um, I think that you have a little bit of insight into that. Can you tell me what you did to be able to get around that? To be honest, like being in Romania and being called fat, gypsy, and so on, I didn't really took it too hard. I think because I was still like so young, like around 13, 14, you know, like I, I was still young. And then on the plus side, on that time, like there wasn't that much social media, Instagram and so on. Mm -hmm. So like it wouldn't make the situation harder, mm -hmm. or like worse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But then when I moved to UK mm -hmm. and then I was around these other people like English or like from other countries, that's when I, they actually like started to kind of hit me, like them calling me like Romanian gypsy or like, mm -hmm. You know, things like that, because I was like, wait a second, like, you're not even from here, because these words, they would come from people that, w they weren't British or English people, you know, mm -hmm. they would come from other people. So I'm like, wait a second, like, you are not even British, and you are telling me these things, like, we all came here for, for a thing. To, from a different for, country. For, from a different country right. to we're create all a better life, exactly, right. we, you know. But, I don't know, I think, luckily, luckily enough, like, I didn't let these things to affect me, to be honest. But it did affect me when it comes to like getting some, getting with somebody with like girls wise. Mm. Like I, I, I had no confidence at all. Like, like zero confidence, even to like. What about that picture that everybody's <clears> ever <throat> shown, where I think you have a drink in your hand, or the girls have a drink in their hand, and they're like on top, like oh, next to you? Oh, uh, that's they saying the party life and no yeah. party life. Yeah. I know which picture. That picture is actually from like, uh, like a trip that I had with my good friends at that time. How old yeah. were you in that picture? I feel like 17. Okay. 17, 18. Yeah, we're going like to have to get Tim to go in there and pull the screen. Screen. I have, yeah, yeah, I have that picture. Yeah. Yeah. And I have like a mark here, like yeah. a beaten mark. But it was actually, like, it wasn't like, I wasn't a, like. A bite like, mark? Yeah, it wasn't. Was it, like, was it like a hickey? Was it something it like, that? like that? It looked like that. Yeah. It looked like that, but it wasn't. I think it was just like, I just hit it or something, you know? Yeah. It was just a boost. Yeah, sure. No, no, yeah. for real. I you got one of those classic <laughs> punches in the chest. It happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. So, yeah. So that picture, <laughs> it came a lot, you know? But... Did did the the weight? Because I actually would be interested to hear this from your perspective. Did the weight things drive you? Was that like this one of the major drivers towards fitness? Was there any kind of outside things from family? Because I was a really hefty kid. I got made fun of all the time, and that was like, I'm going into the gym. Like I'm I'm never gonna have this happen again. Um, 
for me, the thing is, it, it was like I moved to UK and then I had to wait like three, four months to get a place into a school. Mm. So like I was like, oh, there's nothing to do in three, four months. Like I have no mm-hmm. friends. I don't know anybody. So like the, I remember it was like a health club, which allows me only to train like two, three times a week because I was under 18. And the membership, it was only like eight pounds at that time, which is like $10, you mm-hmm. know. So... I decided to join, but of course I didn't know anything. Just to kill some time, not even like to lose some weight or anything. Yeah. And then uh, I made the Romanian friend there, which is also my best friend now. And I still talk to him. This is like 11 years ago. And I started training with him. And then uh, that's it. That's pretty much there. From there, I just started seeing a little bit of progress, like, like losing the weight, the extra weight that I had. But then the problem was like, I lost weight. I became skinny, like tall and skinny, mm-hmm. you know? And then I had to like build up, right? Because I was just like literally so skinny. You're so thin. Yeah, so thin, so thin. So I had to like build size. But of course, like I didn't. When did you get or start getting into modeling? Around seventeen. Around seventeen. So when you got skinny. When I go like literally skinny, and then I go like a little bit of a little bit of muscles, a little Mm -hmm. bit of size, and then when I go like a little bit bigger, like. They, you know, like these model agencies, they only like like skinny tall guys. So yeah. I was like, not for me no more. Oh, because they didn't want. They, they didn't want muscle. no more. Yeah, 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 it was too much muscle. It was too. Yeah, it was too much. It Got wasn't it. like a bitch kind of body. Yeah, it was a little bit too much for them. Yeah. So. Did you say bitch body? Be- beach. I mean, like oh, going. Beach. Yeah. Beach I that. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I was body. like, it wasn't a bitch body. <laughs> my oh, body. all right. <laughs> so now you have the bitch body. Yeah. <laughs> like, bitch body. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So harsh. So, this a, is the truth podcast. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, it gets me. Yeah. Yes. So uh, that now, when you went through and started wanting to compete, what triggered the comp- competition side? I think I just wanted to push my uh, my my limits. Did you follow anybody at the time? Were you like looking at people going, "Hey, I want to be like this guy"? Or was I was it... actually following. Of course, I was following Arnold Classic, and I remember Flex Wheeler, which I I, I always been liking his physique. But I was looking for people like Sergi Constance or like mm-hmm. Ulysses that they have like smaller body types, mm-hmm. but like more like... Um, Aesthetic? Aste- exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was looking up to these kind of people, you know? And then uh, I said, you know what? Like at that time, I remember wasn't that many young people like my age competing and so on, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember it was a comp- competition that was like under 19 years old or something like that. So I was like, oh, let me just, let me just try it out, you know, like... I got nothing to lose. It's my first show. Like, I've got nothing to lose. So, bear in mind, like, I don't know anything about training. Like, I tra- just train like a normal person, let alone dieting. Like, I was having two free meals, but it was like fried chicken, but it was chicken breast. Okay. <laughs> fried chicken breast. You hear that? Fried That's the chicken key. breast. Take notes. Yeah, the key. Take I notes. know. Can you fried chicken was... legs? No. No, no, no. Only chicken breast. Fried chicken breast. That's chicken okay. breast. Yeah. Easy. So, make sure if you get yes. the fried chicken, get the breast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, I was doing that, and I remember I competed. I didn't win because I I don't know. I was the fried chicken breast. I don't know. I don't know. It yeah. definitely could. It couldn't have it been. It could the be the fried, fried chicken breast. <laughs> Maybe one of the day I, had chicken, I don't know. Why I didn't wings. win. Were you like... sponsored by KFC at the time? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I couldn't even afford KFC. I was just <laughs> getting like a, a cheaper one. But then <laughs> knock a cheaper off. one, <laughs> knock off KFC. <laughs> that's that's Hard rough. Price. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're killing me. But after that, like. I think for me it was a good thing because me seeing me losing that show, like I think it made me like hungrier mm-hmm. and motivated me more to get back into the gym, get better, and come back and win the show because I competed at 17 years old and the mm-hmm. show was under 19, so I had another two years to actually grow and compete in the same show and win it. The right? Peak. Yeah, because I wasn't so far away from the top guys right at that time. You know, I I, I just need more size for my structure. So anyway, two years go by. Of course, in these two years, like I'm working in that gym as a cleaner, chef, so on. And in two years, I come back, I win the show, and uh, that was pretty much it. I remember it was um, a YouTube channel at that time that it was pretty big in UK, in in Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, they came, I, I finished my show, I won, and then they came and took an interview of me, saying, oh, like, um, congratulations blah 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 are you going to be the next big thing in the industry you know this cringy kind of question <laughs> but like motivated que- yeah, motivating yeah. questions you know so like i remember even this video on 
on YouTube somewhere that people taking taking uh, uh, the piece of it. Like, I think I've seen it. it. I think I know like, what you're talking I'm about. Andre, you know, so when yep, yeah, you flex your tricep yeah, there. Yeah. Like that. Yep. Because like, like this is how. Wait, wait, I... So you said basically, <laughs> "Hi, I'm Andre," and then you'd flex. Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm 17 years old. That was as my first show, and then, the, uh, literally, I didn't know no English at that time. Okay. So I knew how to say, "Hi, I'm Andre. Uh -huh. I'm 17 years old," and that's it. And they just start clicks. <laughs> well, that's video. It, intro, our intro done. <laughs> we need to recreate it this week and then do a side by side. Yeah. yeah. And like people like. Is it still out there? Is that out there still? I'll, yeah, I'll send it to, to, to Tim to actually Tim, put it in Tim, the. Yeah, we'll put it in there so they can yeah. see. It's so yeah. funny, bro. Like, it's so funny when I look back at it. And this is when you were 19. When I was 17, it was this thing. But then from that video, it kind of got a lot of attention because I was so young at that time but i had the sh the shape of the muscle you know mm -hmm. like my tricep yeah you got so, yeah you, you, you know? really good tricep so like there wasn't that many people at my age at that time so that it took a lot of attention and then i came back 19 years old i won the show and then that's pretty much it from there i just you know i kept doing whatever i was you got doing. addicted i got addicted exactly literally to the to, to the gym like i remember I, I wouldn't miss a meal. Of course, like my my knowledge about nutrition, training and so on, it, it gone better. So like I would have more meals. I wouldn't have like two, three meals. I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't go out. I wouldn't eat sweets. Like I was probably even more motivated than I am nowadays, you know? Because you were so dedicated. So dedicated, you know? Like, and I was seeing progress literally like every every month. Every month, because you know, at the beginning of the, the your, journey, your body yeah responds that. really quick, you know. Yeah. And thank God, I have I think I have a great genetics, mm -hmm. so it responds a little bit better. Yeah, so Absolutely. yeah, and here we are, four and weeks that's out. Right. <laughs> that's right, we're four yeah. weeks out. But then, I'm trying to remember, you were what 21 when we met? 22, 21, 21, 21. 21. That was uh, yeah, that was in Fibo, Germany. Yeah, and you were with Ram Beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, who's that, your uncle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. Shot fire, really? <laughs> I'm like, a, I'm like you, you have an Indian uncle? <laughs> <laughs> My lost uncle. <laughs> His long, this long lost uh, uncle, Rambeer. And um, it was funny because then he ended up flying to California. And Six months just, after, I think yep. it was. And yeah, then wow. we just got together. We did a workout. Oh, my God. And that, you that have video, the videos. Yeah, right? I do I have, have the videos. Yes, we need we to the put, videos. Yeah, they yes, have we'll to definitely the put that for the And again, look great. He looked great. He had got his pro card at the San Marino Pro. San Marino Pro, yeah. And you had, yeah. I think you were second. I was second, yeah. Right, because so, the top two qualified mm -hmm. in men's physique for a pro card. And he got his pro card yeah. in his division. And then I was like, okay, great. You know, let's see what the pictures look like. I looked at him and I said, okay, he looked good. But again, you could have been harder. You could, you know, of obviously course, you could yeah. use a lot more size for his height. And I, I knew he had good potential, but it was one of those things that will he be able to follow directions? Mm. And where a lot of people don't understand, and we'll definitely have a podcast about this that's separate, is that people don't understand when they go, hey, how come you're not working with this person? Or why didn't you go out to this person? I don't work with those people because I want those people to come to me. And then even then, that doesn't mean that I'm going to work with them. It just means that I'm more likely to work with somebody and become successful if they're reaching out to me. And that's been my system. And that's Andre falls in that category as well. He reached out to me, said, I'd like to work with you. I'd like to work with Evogen. I'd like to work with a brand. At the time, he was with a different brand, and he wanted to switch over. And I said, okay, all of these things were aligning. But a lot of people just always ask. They go, oh, how come you didn't work with this person? Or how come this person didn't work with you? And I said, because I only work with people that reach out to me. Then I go through an interview process. Mm -hmm. And that interview process is over the phone, in person. There's a bunch of different touch points that have to be able to be quantifiable to me to know that I can work with somebody and they can handle the stress of the workload. Is that because of the, uh, them, that initial step of them coming to you is more likely, they're more likely to follow through. They're more likely to be receptive to everything yes. and actually be more hungry. I'm guessing. Yes. Got it. Yes. That's why I don't go out of my way to recruit. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. ever recruit. And when somebody says, hey, so-and-so is available, he's looking for a coach. And I said, okay, well, they can contact me. And then if they contact me and if it works out, then I take it to the next step and yeah. then the next step and the next step. Not only did he come out of his way to meet me at FIBO at, at the booth, 
he flew all the way on his own dime to California to meet with me, to train with me, so that I could turn around. This, I mean, nothing was set in stone yet. Nothing, nothing was signed or anything. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing. He just wanted to show me that, hey, look, I'm so interested. I'm willing to come halfway across the world mm -hmm. so that I can train with you. And if you can put some time aside to train me, then let's discuss. If you like what I can show you, then let's further the discussion with my Indian uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rambeer. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I, 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 I told you he should have been here because he's back at the Airbnb right yeah. now. So when he listens to this, he's going to just sh shaking his he head right now. He's, he can't even defend himself. He can't even defend himself. He's just shaking his head right now. He'll be in the comments section. That's right. He's going to be in the comments section, so I have to do it. And, mm -hmm. um, and so in all honesty, I mean, uh, he really looks out for you and he goes out of his way. No, he does. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. He really does. And one of the things that uh, I realized was that, that he was they were willing to both wanting to be the best version of Andre. And I said, look, I will tell you the same thing I've told every other person I've worked with that either became a champion or just ended up being the best version of themselves is that I can turn around and only promise to give you 100% and give you as much as I can. The rest is going to be up to the judges. And Very what true. you put into it. That is true. And that's exactly how I work. So for the, all of you that are out here that say you cherry pick or you do this or you do that, of course I do. Because I've gotten myself to a point where I can do that. Mm -hmm. Because I went through a lot of amateurs and a lot of people that most people would have to go through to understand how to get better at working with all different types of physiques, males, females, bodybuilders, men's physique guys, everything in between. You know, yeah, you don't even know about half the NFL people I worked, at, you know, worked with or any of those things because it wasn't a platform for me to discuss those things. And so I think that at the end of the day, the cool thing about Andre is he did come halfway around the world just to sit down and interview with me. So, and then at the end of the day, when I saw that he was putting, willing to put in the work and yeah. we did that, then we started furthering the discussion and then we signed him as an Indian athlete and then the rest was history. And like you said, now four weeks out. Yeah, now for for we start to the next show. Yeah, and again, the uh, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now with men's physique because people, some people that are listening to this right now are actually into <laughs> competitions and they want to know what's going on. I mean, I, do you think that the, some of the guys are just getting too big? Do you think some of the things are happening? I mean, again, and and you're not small guy either. I mean, obviously we train you, and you're you're not small. But I'm saying is, do you? I, there's been a big change through the years with all of the physiques changing. And I think that without the weight cap, what do you see out there, you know? My honest opinion is that, yeah, I agree, men's physique is getting too big uh, for the division, for the look that it should be, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And I, I, in my opinion, I think they should do something about it. Put like a weight, high limit class, or I don't know, something like that. Because like, how big do you get? Like, where do you stop as a men's physique guy, you know? Right. Because like, every year, you're not going to train just to maintain whatever you have. That's why it's you called wanna, bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, you're getting bigger. But like, how big do you get for men's physique, you know? Like, because I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. But I f feel like some of these guys, they won't even make height. Or they won't, they won't, they won't even make weight because they're they're just too big too muscular i think you think you wouldn't make weight and even in classic is what you're thinking yeah yeah oh, wow yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right i think mm -hmm. some of these guys wouldn't make weight in classic mm -hmm. and this is supposed to be the the, the division below classic mm -hmm. but because there's no weight limit that some of them are so become so big and i think it is becoming difficult if you had to vote and we've talked a little bit about this with previous you know on one of the previous episodes do you think that there should be a weight limit or do you think there should start a new division that would be a lower kind of more entry level division? If you, again, no right answer. I'm just curious on what your thought I've, is. I personally don't think adding another division would be great because I think there's enough divisions mm -hmm. out there. I think they should put like a weight limit to just to control plus, this one, just, just, just to put a cap. Control, exactly. Just to control like how big this, these guys they're gonna get you know right <coughs> so how what, do, you what do, do you think what do you I, think about it though i look at it two ways i 
I think that you could do one of two things. I think you could either start a new division. Again, there are a lot of divisions, but if you want to do a male, let's just call it male modeling division, you know, physique modeling, something, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to be kind of what originally men's physique was so that the amateurs and everything else have a goal that they can aspire to be at that's realistic, a realistic expectation. I think that would be nice so that both the amateurs and the pros would have a division that would be more of a beach body division, let's just call it. Mm -hmm. Whatever, you can put your marketing hat on and make make a nice division there. But I think even at that point, you have to put weight divisions on there Mm -hmm. that are lower. So if you want to call it Brad Pitt with abs, you know, good looking, Mm -hmm. good abs, but you're not going to be more muscular than X. And then with the current men's physique, I think there should be a weight cap on that. So I've been talking about it for years, but I do think that some of the things I'm seeing on Instagram, I mean, they're just, they look like bodybuilders with yeah, shorts on. I agree. I agree. And, with you. and it's getting more and more. And then, so when you see something like that, then you need to kind of step up because you're like, okay, well, these guys are all placing in top five at the Olympia, top six at the Olympia. Exactly. And you're trying to be top five, top six at the Olympia. You place fifth in your first Olympia, seventh in your second Olympia. And I think that it's one of those things where you have to turn around and say, okay, at what point do you keep chasing? And how is this going to evolve? So, because without without weight caps, it's just it doesn't matter how many divisions you add in. It, the nature of the sport is going to be constant evolution, constant growth. And so we're seeing that into people now who are three hundred plus and continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And just adding in that division, that division is going to be where physique is now in yeah. seven years or whatever it might be. It's just constantly going to grow. Because the industry is growing so much in the the bodybuilding industry too. But as as men's physique, like how big do we get? Where do we stop? Well, that's when you don't have a weight class. I think that's why classic physique is so, uh, it's such a great division. I agree. Because there is such a limitation mm-hmm. on what you can. They've only bumped that up once, right? They only yes, did it, I believe five there was, pound or I 10? believe whatever that was, it was yeah. between five and 10 pounds that yeah. they did. Um, but it's one of those things where I think it's, 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 it's got its niche. Yeah. There, it's niche because of the fact that you are limiting what that person is going to look like. So when you see Chris Bumstead, you see um, any of these guys, that height and weight and everything, you're, you're creating these proportions. And that proportionality is what really drives that classic look because you're focusing on having to stay within a weight class. Mm-hmm. And I think with men's physique, if you look at some of these guys and then you look at who won the first Olympia, Mark Anthony, for yeah. example, and you see how much evolution has, you know, has changed. It's, it's like that same thing with women's um, figure, right? If you see women's figure when Jenny Lynn was winning and you see some of the Devana Medina, Jenny Lynn, all of those things. And then now even w- when you're sitting, seeing the top five now, it's a completely different look yeah. through evolution. But I think with the men, it's just much more extreme because everything kind of goes back into bodybuilding mentality. What is too big in terms of back? What is too big when it comes to pecs and chest, shoulders, caps, this, that? You know, I mean, I know that we don't want to be too blown out in certain body parts like your arms. But at the end of the day, what about the other body parts? What about Mm -hmm. your pecs? What about your shoulders? What about your lats? What about all of these things? I mean, some of the guys, you know, I've got abs better than some of the open bodybuilders out there. (laughs) And and I'm talking about thickness, not just conditioning, but I'm talking about thickness. And you look at the whole thing and you're like, or you see somebody say, Hey man, that guy could take his um, board shorts off and he can go compete in classic. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of leaves things. things being ambiguous. It's like, what is the criteria exactly? You know, 212, you know, mm-hmm. it's like the best of the best under 212. Correct. It's like, that's what you know when you're watching it. These guys are all there. And then it's whoever looks the best at that point. But then again, every year, you don't know what physique's going to be the champion. It's like you don't know who, if they're 15 pounds heavier or whatever. It just kind of leaves things up in the air. It does. I guess we just have to. Yeah, I think we're going to have to wait and see. In. Exactly, wait yeah. and see. Yeah, we're going to have to wait, wait and see. Yeah. And then at some point, the evolution will take place one way or another, whether they do decide to add another division that's more of a feeder entry-level division, you know, beach body type division, or if they're going to turn around and just put a cap on it or a combination mm-hmm. there of both. But um, the good thing is they have opened up a lot of their divisions with wellness and bikini and all of these things. Because back in the day when I grew up, there was just bodybuilding. Yeah. There was bodybuilding men. There was bodybuilding women. There was nothing really in between. Yep. Nothing else. And then they started fitness. Then they started figure. Then they had bikini. Then they had wellness. 
you know, there's a couple of different variations of women's bodybuilding that was out there, uh, women's uh, physique division now. And then same thing with the men. But yeah, I think we're going to have to wait and see. But looking at it right now, do you see yourself, the pressure that goes on with the competition, it's very different than social media. How do you feel that you handle the pressure of all of this? Because the mental aspect of this has become very difficult for many, many people. Because as Instagram changes, then it's TikTok, then it's you know Snapchat, it's all of these things to try to be able to keep your business going, right? You have sponsors, um, you have your own brand now, which yeah. congratulations for Thank launching you. your own clothing Thank brand. You. you know, you not only are with other brands, but you're also launched your own. With the brand, yeah. And, uh, and that's Strut. Strut, yeah. And we'll put the link below too. But um, the thing that I want to say is how do you, you know, do you ever feel like, God, man, I just don't want to post anymore. I'm just tired oh, yeah. of posting. Oh, yeah. I have so many. And, the, you know, the thing is, is like, when I'm on season and I'm shredded, I look good in every angle or like lighting. I don't mind posting because like whatever I take, pic I take a picture, like it looks good. But when it comes to like off season, that's where your mind plays with you. I'm like, oh, I don't look that great or I'm overweight or like things like that. So you don't want to post anything. But then you have to post because at the end of the day, you have a contract. That's your job. You, exactly. That's my right. job, right? And you just have you just have to do it, you know? It's it's like having a job nine to five, yeah. Right. And maybe tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you say, ah, right, today I'm no, I'm not feeling like going to the work. You're not gonna go to the work. Of course you're gonna go to work, <laughs> even if you don't want or you don't want. Of course you're gonna do these things, you know. But another thing is like when I'm in prep mode, the last at the beginning of prep is fine. But when I come like three four weeks out, like that's where I feel like I feel pressure. So right about and, now, and then I. Like right now, this prep is a bit different from mm -hmm. the other preps, pre preps. I feel a little bit better mentally, but like, I don't mind posting now, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't mind. But before, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't post for days or like, I would just go missing on social media because I just can't be asked, you know? And another but why thing, is that though? Why do you think this time it's not as bad? I think it's because I'm just in a, in a better place mentally. And another big thing that, is I'm not comparing myself to other competitors. I'm not watching who's competing against me. I'm not watching right. how good that guy is or, you know. You're I'm focusing not, on yourself. I'm focusing on myself and the Which last you shape. you can control. Exactly. And the last shape that I had, the last show. So if I'm better than that and better, and this is my better package from all the shows that I did, like, it, it's already a win, a win for me, you know, like, because I already beat me, my, other, my other looks, you know. So that's another thing. I think the Com comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm I like this prep. I'm, I haven't been comparing myself to anybody, or you know, I'm like, hey, he looks good, but I look good too. You know, like at the end of the day, we're gonna come on stage 100%, and then it's up to the judges, whatever happens, you know. I think that's good advice for people just even outside of competing. Just because yeah. looking at social media. So oh, yeah, social, social media, social media nowadays, yeah. they can, it, yeah. it can bring you, it can make you good, but also it can bring you down mm -hmm. because, like, <laughs> you have to. To understand that all these influencers, even even like me, you know, like I post pictures when I look the best, when I have a pump, mm -hmm. when I have good lighting. I'm not going to post a picture when I look like shit, right? So that's with everybody, especially like these girls or I don't know, whatever. So like these other people that they look on social media, oh my God, this guy looks so good or this girl looks so good. They get de demotivated or depressed that, oh, I want to look like her. I want to have uh, this chest or I want to have that or whatever, you know? But it's only like just social media showing it's the you highlight something. reel it's exactly. the highlight reel it's the human social media reel. is showing you a part the good part but it isn't showing you the 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 other part you know because i don't know where i heard it but i heard somebody <coughs> talking about how it's not just the highlight reel of people physically but it's the high, highlight reel of people emotionally emotionally so you yeah. start to look at them and you're like these people are always happy like these people are always you know they're they're not stressed yeah i mean look then, at all the influencers yeah. that have issues right yeah. i mean look at poor column right yeah column. I mean, you'd think that his life was perfect, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he's jumping out of a window. Mm -hmm. And the poor guy, obviously, this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. These things are happening in the background, and we don't know all of the different nuances and the personal you know, endeavors they're going through and all of those things. And I think that people really who are listening to this need to understand there's people that are right now listening to this that are going through a lot of shit right now, I and agree. it's okay. 
And I think, again, what helps this in our industry is working out and being able to get in there and reduce anxiety through working out and trying to be healthy and doing things that are going to help burn off that anxiety. And I think that with doing that and having limitations to stimulants and having limitations, you know, to too much light, because again, not just what you're watching, but just being in front of those screens, mm-hmm. that blue light is going to screw up your sleep patterns. And then it also, when you have bad sleep, you're, you know, you're going to have, you're going to be a moody motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> Literally, right? Yeah. So between all of those things that those are again, all forms of torture. You hear me talk about it all the time, but what needs to happen is you need to be able to figure out how to be able to start again. The number one thing I've noticed is that everybody has missteps. Everyone. I don't care if it's Andre. I don't care if it's, you know, the best people in the world at anybody. I don't, it could be Tom Brady at football. Anybody has missteps. The problem you run into is when you can't get back on the horse and start again and you push that off. That's the number one problem people run into is how to start again. Mm. And they push it back, push it back, push it back, push it back. And then it gets harder and harder and harder. That's right. To get that momentum back. So number one, try not to lose momentum when you have it. But when you do have it, you got to get right back on and you're not going to want to go to the gym. You're not going to want to eat clean. You're still going to want to eat crap because it makes you feel better mentally for the next hour or two. But you got to put those excuses aside, get your fluid in, get your water in, get your pre-workout and go to the gym. There's a saying that they're saying, don't, uh, what is it saying? Race, but don't quit. Mm. You don't quit. Okay. Race, but don't quit. This is how, like when you come off the radar or like off track, a lot of people, they actually just stay in that place, you know? So like, like you said, like everybody's got this, these moments in life or their journey that they come off track and then they get back into it. The main thing is like, don't, don't quit. Don't quit. Just like keep going. And like, like you said, I agree that gym thing is such, it's not even like about building size or getting an amazing body or anything like that. Sometimes it's just therapy. Like it just, it just puts you in a good mood. It does. It does. And I, and I think the biggest thing, and I was thinking about this the other night, because I had taken two and a half weeks out of the, off the gym between mm-hmm. having to travel to California, then coming home, changing, repacking my suitcase, and then taking our vacation. And we were thinking about canceling the vacation because we had so many things going on mm-hmm. with Evagen and all of the different things that we had going on. Normally, the old me would have just canceled the, the thing. But again, it's my son's summer. It's my 10-year wedding anniversary. I'm not going to sacrifice this shit anymore. Yeah. So we went. And we had a great time. I'm glad we did it. And it got me ready. And by the time I got back, I I wanted to get back in that you're fired up and you're back in the gym. But it's that mental state of saying, even in the beginning, go to the gym, even if you're going to just do a little bit of cardio, even if you're just, just get yourself physically out of the house, get yourself physically out of the house, go on a walk, talk to your friends, do whatever, get on the phone, get on the treadmill, go outside. If the weather is okay, go to the gym, get some pump sets in. And then just try to build that habit again Get and do that 15, 20 minutes workout, whatever that workout is. Then the next day, add another five or 10 minutes to it. Then the next day, because you're going to start feeling better and then you're going to create, you know, we're creatures of habit. You need to get yourself back in. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're watching on, you're saying, hey, dude, it's so hard for me to go because it's been so many weeks. It's been so many days that I haven't been to the gym. What you got to do is take that first step and get back and take yourself out of your environment of Netflix and everything else that you're doing and go in to the gym and turn off your social media, turn off your phone and listen to your music. Get, get a really good playlist, right? Yeah. A really good oh, playlist. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. very important. You guys don't understand how important that is. <laughs> the vibes. Yes. You got to ha- Yes. And those vibes are going to help just really help you gravitate to a nice mental state mm-hmm. of motivation. And that's what you need to do to be able to get past that plateau. And that's it. And I mean, it really, it turns that it's, it it sounds very simple because it is, we make it hard. We make it harder. Yeah. We make it harder than it is. So the time that you really have that bitch voice sitting on your shoulder, telling you to God, it's a little late. It's a little cold. It's a little, I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever. That's when you need to go the most. 
that's when you need you can't give in to that inner bitch voice. So at the end of the day now, were you and I, actually Austin's coming too, at yeah. the end of the week, we are going to the American Fitness Expo. So Houston, so for those of you that are in Houston, live anywhere near Houston, anywhere in Texas, or you have your own pli- private plane, or you've got to <laughs> Yeah, we have a very <laughs> large enough. demographic of people with <laughs> their private planes. Yes, so, for yeah. all those, yeah. I, I have a lot I of, I have, I have a there. huge demographic of, of, <laughs> of people who follow me that have private planes, you know who you are, and um, you guys can come out to Houston, Texas this weekend, so we will be there, the whole Evagen crew will be there, myself, we, everybody who's here on the podcast, as well as Derek Lunsford, the 212 Olympia uh, champion, as well as the current Miss Olympia figure champion, Sid Gillian is going to be flying in from Atlanta, so she's going to be there as well. And Hadi Chopin will not be there because <laughs> Hadi Chopin, it's a little bit of an issue getting him here, but we're hoping uh, that we will be seeing him at the Olympia because everybody's asking me, how come Hadi's not in the uh, in a poster? How come he's not in the poster? Well, he's not in the poster because, again, everything's a process with his well, visa. Exactly. But at the end of the day, um, I talk to him all the time. He's working out really hard. We miss I see you. his videos as well. He yeah. trains crazy. Yeah, crazy. And, and he's training very, very hard. And yes, he is going next level beast mode. And um, I think that the other thing is that's really cool too is if you're interested in becoming an Evagen athlete, I want to put this out there only because I'm getting hit up on DM a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And you want to come by and talk to us. We're going to have our athlete manager there all as well. Paul is going to be, com- is going to be coming in as well. So um, or if you want to go in there and sign up and you can't be there, evigenelite.com, um, that evigenutrition.com, and you can click on the Evigen Elite program because I am getting a lot of people asking because there's a lot of programs out there. And if one thing is be someone, if you want to be a part of a program, you want to really truly believe in it and believe in the brands you're with. And I think if you are, I mean, what do you suggest for people that come up to you all the time and say, hey, I want to be an influencer? Do you suggest that as well? Like to be a part of a brand that you actually truly believe in? Or try, because again, exactly. it's not about the check. It's about who you're with well, and you what you feel. Believe in if you, another thing is like, because I see so many influencers and so many athletes that they're actually just changing brands like socks. And he's <laughs> changing like socks. You, say, you true, just though. said changing brand like socks. No, but it's true though. It's true. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you believe in this brand for like six months. And then what happens? You're going to another brand and saying, oh, I believe in this brand now. Right. You know? So I, I, I think, in my opinion, like, we've been together for f- almost four years now, yeah, right? Yeah, four years. Four years. People so usually like, don't even, aren't even married that long. I know, right? I know, <laughs> so right? Andre wears his socks for four years. <laughs> bro, yeah. This is my longest relationship, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. What's your longest relationship? Uh, it says like, Honey Rambo. Congratulations. <laughs> exactly. Congratulations. Just believe in the brand that you work with, uh, that you get approached or you approach. Also, most importantly, believe in the supplements that you take in, and you have to enjoy the uh, the the process of it, the journey with the brand, and just have fun, man. That's it. That's have it. Fun. Wise words. That's it. <laughs> so again, guys, I just want to say thank you, Andre, for coming thank and stopping by. Me. I definitely want to do at least one more before your show here in the next four weeks. Right now, he is slated to do the Texas Pro Show. Um, here in this down. is the first time that you're actually saying because nobody Whoa. knows what I'm doing. Okay, we're gonna edit this out. This part of it. No, you uh, can you can leave it. You, can, you it? can give them the sign. Oh, we'll give them the yeah, sign. Yeah, there yeah. it is. That's it. <laughs> Tejas. Hey. The, yes, the Tejas. And what's cool is the fact that now that he's there, I mean, honestly, I want to say it's so much. I missed him so much, and I don't even forget. I was like, how long it's been, and you kind of don't. When you really interact with people at the level I do, I mean, I think you saw it today. Yeah. Right? During during yeah. the workout. And especially on Saturday, too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, you guys haven't seen each other in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so long, yeah. It's been yeah. For so long. Yeah. Yeah. The energy is like a whole different level. Right. And I think that he realizes it because I know that he also says, hey, man, I can't wait to come and train with you. Yeah. Because uh, even, even I, I'm texting you, like, I can't wait to get there. Like, I miss you, bro. Yes. You know? Hani no. was dancing in the gym. And that's actually not an understatement. There was yeah, dancing the happening. Of the workout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I was like, like, bro, I need this pre workout mix that you had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You took the extreme with the uh, brain builder yeah. and i was like dude i thought i was at a rave it. i was at a yeah. rave bro. I was <laughs> like, whatever yeah. this guy is taking i need this, this energy yeah. yeah yeah it was really good and i just like i just i I'll, but when i do that afterwards when i come down oh god i wish he would have came five months ago <laughs> you know <laughs> so i feel better well, five hopefully months from ago. now on it's not yeah. gonna be that long no nine months yeah yeah, yeah. well again it's gonna be great so you guys 
If you want to follow the journey, we have it at Evagen Nutrition on the YouTube page as well as the Instagram page. Make sure you follow Andre if you don't already, because I'm sure you probably already do, because he's got almost 6 million. What are you at, 5.9? Well, no, 5.6. 5.6? But I guess, yeah, end of the uh, year. Even, no, earlier, I'll get six. There we go. You yeah. think so? By the end yeah, of the year? Hundred. Yeah. After I win the Texas Pro. There you go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, he's gone. Oh, there it there is. You go. <laughs> Shots fired. So, so going for that big 6.0 million uh, followers by the end of the year, that's the goal in regards to social media. And I think that uh, we want to be able to put a lot more tips because people have been asking about the tips. And um, the other thing that someone wanted to ask me to ask you is our little 19 year old david butler wants to train with you one day so oh i'm ready yeah have you had a chance to see him and meet him yet i think he was at the no. gym when when you'd walk by but i think he was working and i, I think yeah, yeah nobody i haven't seen or nobody approaching okay. or anything yet. okay yeah so yeah but it would be good to do a work i haven't been training training with somebody you know that they actually look up to me or like a young kid uh-huh. i want to be training with my friends so that would be a good uh Good experience to actually train with somebody. Yes, and one other thing. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a workout with David Butler. Yeah. We did already. Saturday's workout was um, we ended up doing back. We just did chest today, chest today. and we're gonna go ahead and we have to do legs because so... everybody wants to see Andre do legs. Andre Bro, do legs. Honestly, I enjoy doing legs lately. It's just because I think I saw a little bit of progress on my legs. I've seen that. You showed me your yeah, quads. Right? It's on TikTok right now, actually. All right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we posted a video right. on TikTok yeah, of the legs yeah, yeah. update. On the Evigen TikTok? Yeah. Okay, so you guys, check out the yep. Evigen TikTok yep. because his quads, he gave a I'm more looking. sneak peek. People were trolling on there, and then we put that to we put that. What to did they list. say? What was the comment? Everybody was like, oh, it's not no quads. He needs to skip right. it. Friends but don't let friends skip these... leg day or anything like that. But I... the second video is also blowing up right now. The oh, one yeah? that we put out today, oh, yeah, okay. it's, it's doing really well. Thing is, my calves are small. So it makes my whole <laughs> physique look like I don't have legs, you know, because of my calves. So that's tomorrow why por- we're that's training. Why, that's why porn stars don't train legs. <laughs> 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 Three thousand. I'm in the wrong yeah. industry. Again. I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> That's it. Uh, That's it. Oh, they don't. Want, they don't want to look too small down there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I'm not saying that's why you don't train legs. <laughs> no, no, no. I train them, okay? I train them every five days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so guys, go ahead and follow us all on IG. And again, thank you, Austin. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the truth.